How's it going, guys? Let's see. Da, da, da. Just getting set up. Can you guys hear me okay? Need to get over to see chat. All right. How is everybody doing tonight? Are we good? Yay. How's it going? All right. Let's see. Let me I need to get uh let me get this link and post it to my How's it going everybody? Welcome, welcome. Tuesday night. I just need to post this on Facebook. It's Tuesday and you know what that means. Streaming. Streaming. If I can spell. One moment. Which, if I could type, that'd be great. Uh, almost there. Boom. Okay. I'm here. <laughs> I figured... What's up, Blance? What's up, Mad Duck? How's it going, everybody? How is it going? Okay. Let's see. So, tonight... Um... I wasn't feeling the dragon to continue the dragon, so I figured I would do another cartoon character, and I'm gonna—I want to do a head, mainly this guy right here in the corner. This is done by Luigi. Luigi does some fantastic art that is just perfect for sculpting. He has a really, really good sense of volume and really appealing, cute characters. So, uh, hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up, Cody? Um, so. I have a surprise. I think we'll have it ready by next week. Um, so this week is kind of a filler, kind of an in-between. And I just wanted to get, you know, this is just kind of a two-hour speed sculpt. Let's sculpt ahead, kind of like Danny Mac does. But it's a cartoon male, kind of a teacher guy instead of, you know, your your typical, yep, Luigi Lucarelli. Yeah, that's the one. So, okay, so let's get started, shall we? Um, yeah, I've, I've uh, sculpted a couple of Luigi's concepts. I love his stuff. So, let's see, I'm going to hide that floor. And I typically just start with the skull. So, um, I wonder, can you guys, can we do a little test here? You guys can help me out here. I, I replaced my other mic, which was a Rode Procaster. I'm also sitting down tonight. I've been standing for most of the day, so I'm sitting down tonight. Anyway, um, I switched out my Rode Procaster for a Yeti. I had a, Ye I had a Yeti a long time ago, and it made too much white noise, like too much stuff it's the mic was too good it would capture too much too much stuff so I was wondering if you guys could tell me I'm gonna unmute this um, and I'm gonna switch the input source if you guys could tell me if you like the Yeti better okay so let's switch it now let's see Yeti okay here we go is that working can you guys hear me does it sound a lot different I'm just wondering if it sounds better or worse or can you hear me better is the volume okay and I'm going to I'm going to switch it back. I just want to know what you guys think about that. Okay. Okay. Way more okay, that's what I thought. Thank you for the test guys. <laughs> way more yeah I have a fan going in the background and all this okay so 
and this microphone is right by my mouth and anyway okay here we go yeah constant input you're right all right thanks for thanks for helping me test that out <laughs> mail you the yeti <laughs> all right funny I might I might get another headset with a different microphone but we'll see this one's a, the only thing I don't like about this one is if I like bump or tug on the on the cable you guys can hear it or if I touch the mic you guys can hear it so I'm not a big fan of that one so okay let's see so how was your week what do you guys what do you guys do what's new clipping the wire back oh like putting it somewhere yeah so I'm not it's not kind of hanging here so what I was looking at is um, there's a really cool headset I can't remember the the brand name of it. it starts with a B anyway it's it's super super cool um, and then you can get a a clip on microphone so it comes with a magnet and you you like stick the magnet to your headset and then the microphone is separate and it sticks to the magnet and it's really high quality and it has a little foam thing like a pop filter and uh, I might pick up one of those soon looks pretty cool running it down your back I might watch which so Blands what are you talking about my feedback video oh the mod mic yes that is the mod mic that's the one I think it's a mod mic 5 watch the whole thing in two days except for one short video oh thanks man um, that's awesome so what are you thinking about it? So you guys that didn't know, I just launched my course and the cart just closed last night. So um, I have a whole bunch of new students in there and I'm super excited to see what they can do. I can't wait. It always, uh, it always makes me super giddy to see what people do with, with what I teach. <laughs> what do you, <laughs> you slipped in under the wire? Yep, new students. New students in my course. Yay, welcome new students. And I have a whole bunch of things planned for the course. I can't wait. Some interviews. And I'm going to uh, Zebra Summit next week, next Friday, in fact. Can't wait for that. There are going to be some people there that I've never met in my life only online so I heard that my friend Glenn Southern from the UK is gonna be there and if yeah I'm super giddy about that super giddy new student here too <laughs> awesome it's already helped your freehand drawing great sweet I will be there until Sunday Are you gonna be there Blands I'm leaving Monday. It's five. <laughs> it's five in the morning. Well, thanks for dropping by. Thank you very much. Five in the morning. I, you know what I'm doing at five in the morning? I'm sleeping. <laughs> Typically. This guy's got a crazy good crazy muzzle. Uh, yeah, you can share your progress on your dragon, that'd be cool. How do you find out about my courses? Um, I have one one main course. It's just called 3D Character Workshop, like this logo right above me here. Right above me. And if you just go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com, sign up for my newsletter by getting my brushes. And if you sign up for my newsletter, um, you will be informed when the course is going to open again it just I only open it for like little windows here and there and I just barely opened it and closed it um, but I'm going to open it for three days during the ZBrush summit so 
and that's next week so just a super short little tiny window you can get in on it if you if you want and it was 4 a.m. in this Australia holy cow four. well thank you very much for joining me thank you very much holy that just blows me away you guys thank you uh, it's gonna look like a clown for a minute get that nose in there did you <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually sign up for it? Samara <laughs> That's awesome. Super cool. You're going to have to email me so I know who you are, your what your name is. Did you join the Facebook group? Nice. Thanks, man. Very cool. I, I got a lot of new students too. I, I'm just, I hope I, I can keep up with it all. Uh, oh, it's all good. Just, you should have got, you should have got the, the welcome email that, that uh, explains how to do it, so. My support team will take care of you. try a couple new things here with the block out in the front row of the class <laughs> oh that's awesome yep this is this is this is the front row right here <laughs> I'm just trying to line this up. So what I'm looking at is his eye line right here, and then where his no the top of his nose sits in relation to this eye line. So see the eye line across here, and then the top of the nose. That's that's kind of, and then how far his nose goes up, and I'll cut that brow in here in a little bit. And then I'm trying to imagine what his skull looks like back there. And imagine that and then where his jawline goes up I'm gonna have to really adjust that because it doesn't go to the back of his head like this it'll be you know somewhere in this area oh let me see for some reason it's not popping up uh. Hmm. Is it a is it a pop up? Because I have this ad blocker going on and I can't see it. Tiny pick. Yeah, I can't. Sorry, I can't see it. I don't know what's going on. Let's see. Then we'll get his fat neck in there. Thick, thick neck. Um, just, yeah, I don't know. Just wherever. Shouldn't have popped anything up. Yeah, it's just, it's just blank for me. I, I mean, the website's there. And it says click to add tags. So, I don't know what's going on. Turn off search tracking. I don't. I don't know what's going on. Some. Some. Something I have on my browser won't let me see it. Hey, what's up, Chris? All right. Sorry, I'm just spinning around, not doing anything. Here we go. Need to add that neck in here. Mm.
you got it on an imager. Let's see it. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. Kind of hard to see. But yeah. On your way. neck is way thick. Thanks for posting that link, D Patriarch. All right, let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for the summit. There's a lot of cool speakers that are going to be there. ears on. It's like earmuffs right now. <laughs> Need to turn on that local, not floor, local symmetry. There we go. And curve them back in space. Um, so local symmetry, it, well, here's the difference. Let me, uh, remask everything. Um, Chris, yes, we are. I was actually just planning that today. Okay. So this is, this is the difference. Okay. And it, you, you notice usually with scale the most. So I have local symmetry on right now. And if I scale these ears, they scale on their local axis basically not their local axis but where this this gizmo is in in space and if you turn off local symmetry it will scale on the world axis see that it's scaling on the center of the world so typically you don't want to scale on the world axis so if you turn on local symmetry then it'll scale on its on itself on its uh, local you can stick that in the middle that's the difference. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Flying fingers. I I you know, honestly I wish they uh I wish it was on local symmetry by default rather than world symmetry, but I don't know why. Who knows why they choose what they choose. Make this transition a little bit more like an hourglass shape. Kind of come together. You're, what, you're having problems contacting him? I was just talking to him today. He's a, he's a pretty busy fellow, but, and he's on a different time zone too, so you have to catch him. I don't know where your time zone is at. Um, but uh, I think, I don't know, I, I can't recall exactly where he's at. I think he's in Sweden, I'm not sure. Okay, this nose is sticking out too much. We'll have to adjust that as we go. That's better. Okay, let's get let's get the eyeballs in there. Oh, the the male. Okay. Hmm. Oh, he's in Canada, really? 
Okay, I don't know. I don't know where people are. <laughs> So let's separate these out. Mm. Split unmass points. Whoops. There we go. Split unmass points. There we go. I wanted to put these on their own sub tool. That's what I usually do. So then I can turn on transparency and see what they're doing in there. Oh, Montreal? Huh, but he's uh, in Canada, huh? It's cool. You want to see it live? <laughs> the rusted pixel. Hey, what's going on, man? Well, thanks for joining me. Hello. I, like I said, I do, I do want to do some live streams during the day. Uh, eventually, I'm going to get to that. I've just been so busy with uh, this, this course launch that um, I haven't had time. But now that it's, it's launched and it's going well, hopefully I can have a little bit more time for that. Okay. I want to make the top of his head much bigger. But that means a ton, man. Thanks for joining. Super cool. He has a gigantic forehead. And I like to, um, when I'm doing my heads, I kind of like to square the square off the back of the head. And not all characters have that, but it's just kind of something something like that. That's just the reverse pinch brush. Um, I don't keep it that hard of an edge. Let's turn that intensity down. Um, but I do like to have kind of a plane change going down the back, and depending on the character, you know. And then I also like to make a kind of a round connection where the head goes down the neck sometimes. It's especially if that's where the hair is going to be. It's kind of... I'm looking for some flow. You know, some plane changes of course, but straights and curves. So this is a good way to add some straights and curves. Kind of straight, plane change, curve. He's from Sweden. There you go. I knew I knew there was some some Sweden thing somewhere with him. <laughs> some kind of which is interesting. My my ancestors are from Sweden as well, but I've never been there. I would love to go someday. Okay. I think we can combine this and Z remesh it. Let's try it. Is it a walrus? It could be. How's it going? I can make it into a walrus pretty easily. With that mustache. I'm just gonna cup those ears a bit. Jamie from Mythbuff. That guy does look like a walrus, doesn't he? Jamie. <laughs> Let's see if I'm missing anything. Uh, uh, so when you're working, you add very few strokes. Yep, I'm barely touching it. Um, what I like to do is, with my move brush, I like to adjust the brush to the size of the area that I'm going to move. Um, so for example, if I want to look at the top down, see how these, uh, these brows are kind of straight and I want to make them arc a little better around the head? 
what I'll do is I'll change the brush size to be about the area that I want to arc. And then I'll just grab it out here and just kind of push it. See that? Now it's more of an arc and less of a straight. I can do the same thing with the eye cavity. I want to pull the eye cavity in just a bit. But I'm just, when I use the move brush, I just like to nudge, nudge, nudge. Try Otter, what's up, man? Okay, and as far as the shirt goes, I'll add that later on. But I want to combine all of this stuff and uh, before I combine it, I always like to save it. So let's save this as um, Luigi, because this is a Luigi. Luigi head. There we go. <laughs> Why? So it's, yeah, it's absolutely easy to uh it's super easy to overwork it's kind of like i was just telling somebody earlier today it's like a painting if you can overwork a painting you know it's 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 it looks better usually if you just hit it with a stroke you know like boom there it is instead of like du -du 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 -du, you know going down the whole line and just kind of overworking it it just adds noise and uh it's the same as sculpting you know if if you're if you're unsure about things and you're just kind of going like whole bunch of sculpt whole bunch of little motion little strokes it's gonna add noise and mess to your model so you want to just keep it as clean as possible and this whole time I'm looking at the silhouette see this right here and see how this this goes all the way down his head into his cheek I'll, you know, there's two parts to it right now there's a skull and then the lower jaw so that naturally makes a plane change between these two but after I combine them together I'll, I'll go in there and I'll smooth that out too so let's see any tips on how to easily make the teeth bro for my raptor like dragon head um, if you watch the the last week's stream I actually built a dragon like I was working on a dragon and a dragon head and I just use these appendage my from my uh, appendage brushes which you can get on 3dcharacterworkshop.com for free you just this is part of my brush set it comes with all these primitives I just use that appendage brush and draw in some some teeth like if this guy was a walrus you know just draw in some teeth there we go walrus so, and then you can just go in and bend them and do whatever you want. <laughs> Overnudge leads to a bad skin condition known as the warbles. <laughs> I should trademark that word, warbles. <laughs> Got a bad case of the warbles, man. You should get that checked out. <laughs> Smoothing cream. <laughs> it's called Ziri Mesh Cream. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, uh, I always like to duplicate before I do something crazy, like combine. And typically I would use Dynamesh Master, but uh, I just talked to Joseph Drust. They are still working on up updating the Dynamesh Master to work with 4R8 because uh, I guess a lot of the scripting language and stuff of 4R8 changed and it, it's not as stable. So I'm just going to use regular good old Dynamesh. Good old Dynamesh. Let's do it at about 256. Let's hit it. Oh, I, so I Dynamesh the eyes. That's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Okay. Let's do it again, Dynamesh. Here's a little tip. You guys probably already know this, but some of you don't. You know how when you open a menu, the other one closes, and it just kind of flies all over the place? Well, if you hold down shift and tap on one of these menus, it leaves the other one open. So now you can keep both of these open. So just in case, it's just those annoying little things that if you don't know, 
it can drive you crazy. Okay, whoops, 256. Why aren't you typing in? It's my number lock, oh, that's why. Number lock. And I just dynamesh my eyeballs again. Why? There. I think because my number lock was turned off. I was like doing redo last motion or something. <laughs> yeah, just avoid Dynamesh for a little bit longer if you can. So now we have this this whole thing's Dynamesh. Oh, and you can see that, that uh, what did I forget to do? I forgot to hit apply on my dynamic subdivisions. So let's undo that, hit apply, and then hit divide or uh, Dynamesh again. Let's go. Say no. There we go. Much better. Okay. I always forget that. Apply. Apply. I need a big, big uh, sign that says hit apply. So now I can go through here and smooth this all this stuff out. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's one of my favorite parts. Smooth this stuff out. Then, what I like to do, I can turn this up, smoothing intensity. So, see this plane change to the nose right here? I like to grab this fill brush and make a bridge. Make that transition. Let's go a little smaller. And you'll notice that starts to create that, that's kind of that muscle, right? It's that, you can kind of see the eyelid happening right here. And if you use that fill brush coming through here, sometimes it'll naturally start to create that eyelid because it'll put this, this bit of flesh, I guess, in front of the eye to start to create that divot. And it will also start to create a smile line just naturally by putting that in there. See that? Not that I want that, but you could. You can just bring that down and it'll start making a smile line. But I don't want to do that yet. I don't want to do that at all. I, this guy, um, smile lines, unless they're super old, they will actually make your character look old and less appealing. So you, I tend to avoid them if I can. Unless they're like a wizard or something that has like really deep smile lines. Okay. Smooth all this out. See, you can see that he's already starting to come to life. In a super short amount of time, I think it's been, what, like a half an hour, maybe? Wizards are usually old, unless unless you're Harry Potter, I guess. <laughs> I always think, I don't know why I always think, like, uh, like Merlin or something, you know, like those old white wizards. Turn down the intensity of this pinch brush. Just start to add that brow line. Dumbledore. Close the Dumbledore. <laughs> Sometimes I also like to, um, well, cut in that line down here to start to make, to make that, uh, that eyelid, you know? Hey, what's up? Effects Winter, how's it going, man? Uh, your workflow is really appealing. How different is your process for realistic designs? Um, it is not much different at all. I typically don't do realistic designs, but, but when I do, <laughs> I pretty much block out my characters just like this. But then I just take it a step further and start adding more texture detail and stuff like that. And there's actually a student in my course, his name's Andre, and he he does 
realistic characters professionally full time. That's his daytime job. And he took my course to learn how to do stylized characters. And once he learned how to do this technique, he has now adopted it for his realis realism stuff, his realistic stuff. And he showed me some of his blockouts for his realistic characters because they're like uh, comic book heroes and stuff like that, like super high anatomy. And he blocks it all out now and it's, it works out really cool. So makes me happy to see that going on. And these are just some, I like to put in some landmarks typically. And then I will build up the uh, eyelids. So that's another thing I do that most other artists typically don't do is I, I'll build up my eyelids because I just like them to be subtle. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Winter. You're going to make me blush, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. So this fill brush right here, instead of, see, what I could do, and it's not wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's not wrong at all. Actually, it helps a, a lot, and I'll do it occasionally. But what you can do is you can take the eyeball, and you've probably seen Danny do it or some other artists do it, where you take the eyeball and do a clip curve and just cut that eyeball in half. So this is after you duplicate it, of course. Duplicate it, cut it in half, and then reshape the half into an eyelid. And it's, uh, an, it's, su it's super nice and it works out great. I don't know why I don't do it, but I, d I just like to s do a slow build, you know. So I'll kind of just paint through the eye like this. I just kind of slowly build it up. And I think the reason why I like to do this is because of uh, the control I have of the uh, how, how harsh the eyelid is coming in and out of the head. Because I don't want a harsh line here and I don't want one here. I just want to build up the eyelid going over the eye just through the center. Sometimes I feel like Bob Ross, like when I'm doing this stuff. Just build it, just build it up. Just put it, just put it right here. Happy little eyelid. <laughs> See, it just, I don't know. I don't know why that makes more sense to me, just to build it up. Then you can just kind of, uh, just kind of subtly let it go, you know? Like as you as you build it up, just kind of work it out and make it soft over here. Then, after you make it soft and you build it up that way, you can come back in and cut it with, or I guess pinch it in with the pinch brush to make a hard line like that. And then I typically make a little ledge across here just to define it. And that's that's usually what you get when you bring in like the half sphere method I was just talking about. You do get this lip and you do get this hard this hard line, but you're kind of working opposite. After you after you bring that in, then you're spending time like softening it out on the corners and stuff like that. So no right or wrong. It's just like a preference thing. It's kind of looking like dopey a little bit. <laughs> like from... And I'm going to turn on another material so I can see this better. I typically do like a zebra modeling right, like this or the zebra gray like this. Because um, what you can see is you can see the detail of the, the surface way better than with uh, Skin Shade 4. Skin Shade 4 is a, a nice, like, when you're all finished and you've colored it. Um, I typically don't sculpt that long in Skin Shade 4. I'll usually turn on, like, Zebra Gray is my favorite, or Zebra Modeling is the other one. And Zebra, you can uh, find it online if you look it up, like, Zebra 
matte cap materials, I think, uh, anything like that, you can find it. Um, and he just makes a whole bunch of really nice materials. And I use one for the eyes called Zebro Eye Reflect that you'll see a lot. I'll put that on there. And you can see, you know, when I when I put that that little bridge of skin in there, you can kind of see how that how that works. And this is what I learned from my friend Michael DeFeo is there's there's kind of a pad in the eye right here. And that will also help your three quarter view. And you can use inflate on a super low setting, or you can use the fill to build it up. But you can just kind of lightly inflate that. And you can see, hey, what's up, Waltron? Um, you can, oh, I should get an Afro Rabbit. What am I, <laughs> just a big old, like that fills the entire camera. <laughs> I used to have one, I don't know where it went. But you can see on this side, see over here? Watch when I'm sculpting over here, you can see the buildup slowly kind of happening right there. And it just changes that silhouette. And I I need to fill out this area so it doesn't kind of, it looks like it's kind of scooping out like to a point and scooping in and then out again. I need to kind of even that whole thing out. So I'll smooth it back down, but it's kind of fun. And then there's another uh, thing you can do too up up here, and I usually use this fill brush. Yep, the hat. The hat's my thing. My bear, my bear's wearing it. <laughs> it's kind of my trademark now. But I like using the fill brush and just kind of building this area up right here. Happy little eyebrow. And that starts to, as you can see, it starts to create this line right here. And it's more prominent in other characters than this guy. You can kind of see the hint of it right here. So rather than going, you know, your, your traditional, oh, there's a line there, I'm going to go cut it in, you know, like I'm going to go just like, boom, stick it in there. Um, sometimes it's just, just like with this piece right here. Sometimes it's better to build into it, you know, like use a brush and build up and let the form create those lines. You know? And you can come and smooth this back out. Make it not so, not so infinity. super sharp. Okay, let's smooth this out. Smooth. And you can also use the fill brush in reverse. So, oh, I missed your, uh, Joanner, I've missed your comment. That's why you're taking your course. I do realistic work and I want to use your method. Awesome. Thank you. Plus seeing simplified characters stylized helps you see things differently. Absolutely. It sees you, it helps you see the form through all the detail, you know, because your, your character is only as strong as its base, as its base forms, its base shapes. If the underlying design isn't solid, then your details will just fall apart is my opinion anyway. <laughs> so what I was going to say is you can also use this fill brush in reverse. So I'm holding down alt and cutting in to this ear. And so you can let the reverse forms cr start to create those lines because I'm pushing in. Then I can make a little, little ear nub. This fill brush is my favorite. And I, I have to give credit to SK. SK is another streamer on here. I can't remember. He's a, a Japanese. He's from Japan. Um, and uh, 
he's he does fantastic like anime looking female to female for for collectibles and uh, he made a handful of brushes there's a handful of my brushes are based off of his brushes and this is one of them so I do not claim this brush this is completely his and it is phenomenal I'm just kind of trying to build this up and blend it into the head without creating too much difference in there and you can just keep kind of just lightly digging into it super fun another thing you could do is I I like to do on the back of the ear sometimes I'll take a primitive and actually like block it in back here but sometimes I just like to build it up and that's like it's like the second cup back here and uh, you just start to fill this fill this in and it just kind of builds up smooth it out just kind of where it connects to the head like I said sometimes I'll just stick a cylinder in there to build that up but it kind of looks like one of those those alien ears or something <laughs> but the slight slight bit of realism like that will add to your your stylized characters slight bit of anatomy it's kind of like this brow build up kind of like this it's just these little things that you're pulling from realism and it's 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 all about just kind of experience with me you know like what I've noticed in the past what I've done in the past what works what doesn't um, and you can see his little chin here just slowly building up and again rather than doing what you think you should do which is oh I'm gonna go cut that in like this right that's what you might do or you might get the inflate brush the inflate brush and go you know build it up like this and that could work but you'll notice that it just kind of makes this well it introduces warbles <laughs> get a case of the warbles when you do that sometimes it'll work though it depends you want to use a big brush and build it up slow you know what does stylized mean? Stylized means that it's not realistic. It's it's typically uh, you're focused more on design and simplification and like silhouette and form and flow rather than how realistic it is. You know, you're not. I'm not copying a photograph. I'm copying a, a, a stylized concept. So that's kind of what that means. Okay, but what I was going to show you is just, like, you can also use the fill brush again to start building up that chin and start to get that line on the edge. Excuse me, and you'll notice that the inflate brush, it'll give you the volume, but it won't give you that line in between the two the two forms the change of direction like like this right here see how that, that's kind of starting to form you won't get that okay and um, the way Luigi's done these eyes they're they're closer than what I have so I want to move them a little closer together but when I want to make a big change like that, before I do, what I usually do is I introduce subdivision levels back in, and I'll typically, uh, I'll typically duplicate it. So I'll duplicate this again, and then I'll save it. Let's see, you had two. Um, this 
nonstop, and this is this is actually the way you would create uh, an animated an animated style character in order to blink his eyes. But what you would typically do is you would build it up, and and this is called digital sculpting. So you would uh, make the high resolution mesh like this, and then you would go back in and rebuild the animatable mesh on top of this. So then you can actually rig it and animate it after that. And it depends on if you're going to make him for a film or a game. The, the density of the mesh may change depending on the what the film or the game needs, if that makes sense. That's a good question. Whoop. Okay, so I'm going to hide the one that I duplicated. Sorry, I'm going to hide the original. Then we're going to Z-remesh this. Turn off Dynamesh, turn on Z-remesh, and let's try it. So this might take a moment, and I hope it doesn't crash the stream. So what I'm doing here is I'm rebuilding the surface using Z Remesher, but it's not going to be an animation ready mesh. It's nice, it's super nice, it has a nice flow to it, like you can see, but it doesn't have a perfect flow. You can see how it's not flowing very nicely around the eyes, and that's okay, because we're gonna try and we're gonna we're gonna try and fix that by pulling these eye sockets into the head more. And then I'm going to project the uh, the high detailed mesh back on top of this too. Because you're like, oh no, he's lost all the detail. It's still it's still there in my duplicated mesh, and we'll reproject that on. So Z remesher works if you have a hole or a cavity in your mesh, it will try and put uh, an edge loop around that cavity, that recessed area. You can also get inflate and do the inverse in that cavity and it'll kind of hollow it out more. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the mouth, but small try and do it from the side. Just grab a little bit of mask area like this. Uh, maybe more. Yeah, something like that. Invert it and pull it in. Okay, it's going to look ugly for a minute. Then if I Z remesh this, it'll go really fast because it's already Z remeshed. And you'll notice that it, it kind of follows the contour of the eye better. But this mouth is a bit messed up because it was chunky. So I'm going to smooth it out. Smooth it out. And then use that inflate reverse and just kind of make the interior of the mouth big inside there. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to come back in later and make it a nice shape, but for now I just want to have it just just have an interior in there. It doesn't matter what the shape is right now. And I'm going to... Uh, I, I just want to subdivide this once just to be a little smoother and then hit it again see what it does. See, it makes pretty, pretty nice geometry wrapping around that mouth. Okay, now what I can do is start to close it up. So I'm going to get my move brush and with little tiny movements, just start to pull it down. I mean, you can't really see his mouth because it's buried by his mustache, but I do want his lower lip to be kind of 
coming out around that mustache and it's just easier to make mouths when they function like they should rather than trying to fake it and cut it into the head it's just easier to do it like this this is kind of a new technique that I've been experimenting with if you've been watching my other streams so um, once you get to here you're I'm kind of you, you can't uh, pull it together because it'll kind of fight with itself I mean you can in the middle because I have topological on but once I get to about here then I'll switch to inflate I'll close it up the rest of the way with inflate and that'll also kind of help grow that lip out too give it some volume this wireframe okay now we can bring the Oh yeah, T-Chan, that's, uh, yep, that's typically, and you can, you can use Z Remesher guides, or another tip you could use is, um, you can try and make it a polygroup, you know, this, because this is starting to make diamonds, like right here and right here, which is okay, it's not a perfect circle around here, but what you could do is you can make this area a polygroup, and then on your Z Remesher, just turn on keep groups and then it'll try its hardest to kind of keep a group around there another way you can make it perfectly round and this is what my friend Steve James does is he will actually delete like get rid of the back of the eye right here he'll just mask it off uh, sorry he'll uh, he'll hide the back of the eye right here the the back of the socket and then delete it so it's actually a hole like a physical hole then when you Z remesh it it tends to like go right around that hole better that's another another thing you could try there's like three different things you could try so um, I'm just looking for the topology to flow around the top and the bottom eyelid I don't really care too much that it's doing this triangle thing so it should be fine yeah there's a there's a couple different ways you can try and fix it so okay now that I have it like this I want to tuck this geometry back up underneath the nose a little bit even that out okay I'm just nudging it I'm actually using my mouse for some reason what's going on okay you always want to look at your scope from the top and the bottom to make sure you have a nice arc. See that? And you can tuck the corners of your mouth into the head. Even more. Then it'll start to make that kind of the dimple on the sides of the mouth. Okay, but right now, I want to, I can do one of two things. You know, you saw all that work I put into making it detailed, and now it's all gone. It's not gone, it's in the subtool above it, which is right here. If I turn off solo, you can see it. But now he has a mouth. And so how can I get that detail back on to this lower resolution mesh? Well, I can add some subdivisions and project or I can just manually put the detail back in either way it doesn't matter what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually mask off the areas that I just added like the mouth like this and then like a clown I guess And 
I can, uh, blend it in. Then I'm going to see what it looks like if I project it. So turn solo off and I want to hide those eyeballs because I don't want to project that. And these uh, these sockets will stay, they should stay out of the project envelope so I'm not too worried about that. And then just try and project all and see what happens. Then I'll hide that. So it looked like it pulled the geometry into the socket just a little bit. Okay, then I can subdivide. Whoops. Need to clear my mask or it'll subdivide everything except for where it's masked off. But then I'll have to mask it again. And blur it again. And project it again. So it looks like looks like this lip it was still trying to grab it. So I want to make sure this is nice and masked off. Otherwise you'll get some weird stuff. Okay, let's do it again. Project. You have to sing it. So now you can see the difference between the two you can usually see with like the lighter gray and the darker gray. More lipstick. Yes. And you'll see where it tried to project but it, it fell out of the envelope and you can just kind of smooth that out. It doesn't matter because it's behind the eyeball. You'll never see it but, you know, clean it up anyway. <laughs> And then it looked like it grabbed a little bit of that lower at lower lip and we can just smooth that out smooth it out and we can build that back up with inflate and then I'll answer your questions in one sec let's unhide those eyeballs and hide the other one so this is now the new mesh with the new topology and now it has subdivision levels and it now has detail and it has a mouth. So let's see, uh, da, da, da. thanks flip table. Um, so mouths are not only used when sculpting, they're also used when retopologizing and projecting detail, yes. Masks are amazing. Like, if you don't want to affect an area, just mask it off. And a lot of the tools will respect masking. So, like this, the, the clip curve brush right here. So if you mask off a section like this, and you use this clip curve brush, and then you clip like this, see, it respects the mask. Pretty cool. So there's uh, lots of magic happening <laughs> with the masks. I like to smooth this area out f from the edge of the lip. So typically lip, the bottom lips are like, uh, they come to like here. I'm not going to leave that there, but they don't come all the way out to here like that. See, that's dumb. They kind of come into here, and then you can smooth them out. Then sometimes you can put a harder edge like that if you want. Yeah, masks are amazing. Sometimes what I'll do too, I mean, again, you're, you're not going to be able to see this because of the mustache, but sometimes you can use the fill brush and make the cartoon mouth edge by doing this the fill brush and just building it up like that and then just kind of uh, I'm going to subdivide one more time and then so you can get those those lines that you typically see in like a cartoon 
can use the detail brush to come back in and cut them in even more. I j I'm just doing that, just kind of emphasize that cartoon mouth. You can do that. And I'll usually, like I said, I'll usually do that by building up with the fill brush like this. And the corners of your mouth are typically the darkest. That's why having an actual cavity is really nice because then it's naturally darkest. Okay, so now that we have our head all Z-remeshed with, with uh, subdivision levels, sorry this blip shape is bugging me, I can go down in subdivision levels and make large edits on the lower levels. That's typically what I do. So I'm just looking for the flow so it doesn't have the warbles. You're always fighting those warbles. So there we go. Okay. So, like I said, the, I think the eyes are a little too far apart and they're not quite big enough. So, um, don't be afraid to make large changes. This is what I talked about in my webinar is new modelers are just like, I've gone this far, I've put in this much detail, I don't want to make large changes. Well, if it doesn't match the concept, you need to not be afraid to make large changes. So I'll do a little demo for you guys. And typically when I go to exploration mode like this, I'll, I'll duplicate again. But now I have these guys up here and uh, these are just, you just ignore them, just keep going down the, down the line. And uh, so now I'm here to the, at this one, and I'm going to start making some large changes. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to duplicate these eyeballs because I want to remember where they were based on where they are now, and I'll start to move them in space. So let's uh, put them on the surface, put the gizmo on the surface and scale them up, and then move them kind of closer to the nose. So I, I'm basically giving myself a guide to where to put everything else. Make them a little larger. Okay, so now let's try matching the eyelids to those eyes. You can turn off topological, I don't need that anymore. And typically, there is one eye size in between the two eyes, just proportionately, just for appealing characters. It's usually like, if you can measure this eyeball, there's usually one more eye right in the middle. If you had a third eye right in the middle, it'd be about the same size. So that's something you can use to gauge. And now I really start to fine tune and just kind of look what, at what the eye shape is doing. He's kind of in an, exp an expression, but I really want to match that shape without making the eyelid itself disappear or introduce warbles. So, need to be careful. <laughs> Okay, I think that looks better. Um, I, want, I want to push it, the cavity right in here is typically deeper. So I'm just going to push that in with the detail brush. And then smooth it out. kind of becoming a little too busy in there, but it's all right. Okay. Then I kind of lost, see how I 
what happened right here. I kind of lost that eyelid. You can just come back in with the pinch brush and pull that back out. And then you can also move it. This is what I was talking about with the size of the move brush. I know that this area, the area I want to move is about that big. So I look at the in, internal circle, not the external circle, but the internal one, and I just size it accordingly. Like I want to move this whole thing in. So I'm going to make it big, pull that whole thing in. So I don't just leave my move, si move brush the same size all the time. So I, I, you know, make it big and small depending on how big of an area I need to move or adjust. <laughs> well, like tribbles. Are tribbles from Star Trek? Or what are those called? Those little fur ball things? Am I thinking about the right thing? Excuse me. Let's bring that lower eyelid back. Star Trek, yay! I am a geek. I am a real geek. Okay. Alright, let's uh... And they hate Klingons. <laughs> I hate you! Anybody see that new Star Trek? Okay, this is how you can uh... You can snapshot your model to the background by hitting Shift S. See, now it's there. And now I can go back. I just wanted to show you the before and the after. So let's show this, and let's show this. And there is the eyeballs before and after. So, see how they're larger, closer together, just a little closer to the concept. Tribbles. <laughs> I haven't heard that for a while. But you guys watch the new Star Trek? Just wondering what you thought. The new Klingon designs, that's what reminded me of it. Those new new designs for Klingons. Okay. You have CBS All Access? Ah. I haven't seen the new one. I watched the first episode but not the second. I'm going to draw his eyebrows in now. How do you get rid of the snapshot? Uh, control N for new. That creates a new document. So control N. Yeah, I'll do that all the time. I'll send, I'll typically send my uh, models to my art director or client by hitting shift S, turn it to the side, shift S, do a three quarter shot, and I'll turn on perspective and I'll send it like this. Boom. Easy. So, and then control N when you're done and it'll get rid of everything. Yeah, the first two episodes, um, <laughs> I, I have an opinion about them, but my opinion is it didn't feel, it didn't feel very Star Trek-ish to me. I'm a, I'm a pretty big Star Trek fan. And Honestly, or Orville, that new, that new or uh, Star Trek fan show, <laughs> felt felt a little more like Star Trek than the new Star Trek did. But I liked it. I liked the new Star Trek. It was, it was more like the films, more cinematic, like you said, more drama, more flash, more explosions. But the campiness and the the character buildup, you know, wasn't really there. Yeah, I love, I love, I love the Orville. I like that show. Okay, let's see. So, let me make some, oh, I'm getting an error saying it's composed of multiple subdivision levels. How you do that is just duplicate again, delete the lower resolution or lower subdivision levels. Then we'll just draw on here. Yeah, it is for the new generations of fans. Like, they need all the flash and the show. I 
I'm kind of a next generation Star Trek fan. That's my that's my Star Trek. <laughs> See, I guess, I don't know, I wasn't a fan of the new Klingons just because they, I, I mean, we don't know, but like their, their personalities are like non-existent, right? They're just all like, they remind me of the, of the orcs from Lord of the Rings. They're, they're just a group of rough and tough guys and they're nothing more, you know? Okay, why isn't that? Sometimes, okay, I'll just I'll just have to add that in in a minute. Yeah, th yeah, that's Joner. That's what I'm talking about. Like, it feels like more like the new movies. But the new movies, they have the personality of the characters. Maybe they just haven't built them up enough yet for me. I don't know. Maybe they... Because it's all just action. I mean, they started to. Okay, let's see. Where are you, Browse? There they are. Delete hidden... This is typical. You see the eyeballs overlapped. I made them big. This is it's pretty typical of uh, cartoon slash stylized characters to have their eyes overlapping inside the head. Yeah, that topology brush. It's a finicky bugger. That's for sure. Okay. So if you um, with the transpose brush, if you turn the draw size to one and tap on the surface it's kind of hard to do sometimes it won't it won't take but um, it will give you um, a single-sided poly so it doesn't add the thickness like it typically does if you tap on the surface so okay let's get moving here whoops didn't mean to do that I just want to bring this out on the surface. He even has a taller forehead than I gave him. Need to pull his forehead up. Yeah, you're just constantly reassessing, like measuring between the top of his eyebrow and the top of his head and see how low mine is. He really needs a larger forehead, a larger head, top of his head. Okay. Now to get these kind of uh, pointy at the ends, let's go like this. Because I typically don't like to have triangles at the end. I'll make them quads. They're just easier to manage that way. So you guys that want to meet up at the, um, the Zebra Summit, uh, we're going to have a meet up at the, oh, what is it called? It's like a Star Wars cantina, like Scum, S Scum and Villainy, something like that. It's a Star Wars cantina. It's so cool. It's just down the street from the Noman School. All right, we're gonna extrude these. Extrude polygroup all. Scum and villainy, I think it's called. It's so cool. You should look it up. It's like it looks just like the inside of the cantina on Tatooine. Scum and villainy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Oh man. You can thank Kyle for that suggestion. Pixelogic Kyle. What I'll usually do with uh, these eyebrows, I'll manually put a bevel on there, which means I'll come in here and I'll just like one by one pull these little dots in, these vertices, to 
make kind of a bevel on this eyebrow. It's a pain in the butt, but uh, you have all the control you need. Because, like, a actually using doing a bevel on these brows, like, the actually using the the bevel utility in the Z modeler, it will typically overlap the geometry and look not not good. You have to go fix it anyway. So, I just uh, take it upon myself to fix it in the first place. Plus, I like to go thick to thin on the bottom. this and on the top just kind of thicker you have to get the camera angle just right but usually works out pretty good then at the where it connects with the head it's almost it almost disappears into the head almost Just kind of avoid those warbles, kids. Okay, so now if I hit D, that's the dynamic subdivision. I don't necessarily want to have all the creasing happening, so I'm going to just uncrease all and see what it looks like. Um, I think what I want to do is crease the inside. So let's see what kind of polygroups we have. And you know, the ZBrush is kind of weird when it comes to selecting things. Like see this pink polygroup right here? Say I want to select that polygroup. It works when you select a vertice. So if I have Control plus Shift and I tap on this on this vert, see it, you can't tell, but it hid the back polygroup. And if I want to select this pink one, it's very difficult because it wants you to select a vert. So in order to select a vertice in the middle of that pink area, what I typically do is I add another edge like this. See that? And then I can pick the pink like that. It's it it's added geometry that you know I I'm not going to use this for the final game model anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I'll typically add a loop in there just so I can select these things. Now what I can do is um, I can select just the purple, invert it, hit Control W to put this whole thing into its own polygroup, then unhide the back one, and then hit. Uh, Crease polygroup, which is also in my menu. Crease polygroup, right there. Now, when I hit D, it's just a much sharper eyebrow without without it looking like a I don't know floppy snake, <laughs> like, a, like a a slug has a little bit more shape and form to it, you know. Okay. Just trying to smooth that out just a little bit. But. Okay, so let's grab this head. Make sure the brows are showing. Slug brow. <laughs> Need to get his mustache in there, that's for sure. Okay, I'm going to go to the lowest subdivision level because I'm going to make a big, big move pull his head up in space. I really like how it it swoops down here in the back. So I'm going to see if I can get that. That's a little too high now. Too much. Pull back. Okay, which made his uh, brow lines really big. I'm gonna smooth those back out. 
those uh, the brow meat kind of shouldn't be that big should only be down in here now because this I made his forehead so huge it stretched those out okay let's make his mustachio just like we made the brows so we'll duplicate him Boom. hide the other one then delete lower subdivision levels because the topology brush doesn't work on objects that don't have subdivision levels brow meat <laughs> throw some brow meat on the barbie <laughs> <laughs> we use meat all the time like like palm meat eyelid meat <laughs> I don't know why we started calling it that I blame my art director John Diesta <laughs> he used to call it meat Uh, we'll pull it out to about here. Mm. Let's see, that's a little too long. Um, I'm going to draw the top first. This will be one of those, I'm going to edit it a lot after I'm done. I just need to get the geometry there. That'll make a triangle. Then you can draw on the edge and make a quad. Clean it up. Okay. Now this one, I'm actually going to add some depth right away. So sometimes the reason I don't add depth right away is because I want to shape it. So I change my mind because I want to pull the mustache off of his face so it doesn't lay on his face right near his cheek. I want it to stick out just a little bit and I need to push it up up underneath his nose more. So I want to uh, I do want to make it just a single sided poly. So I'm going to tap it until it disappears. Oh, come on. Tap. There it goes. Then hide it, invert it. There it is. Eyeballs and a mustache. Delete hidden. Unhide that other one. Okay. Let's turn on transparency so we can see what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. I guess muscles are meat, right? So it looks like it did end up making this a triangle, but that's okay. We'll just we'll deal with it. Not the end of the world. How's it going, Rabbit? On your Tuesday night. Thank you so much for spending your Tuesday night watching me fool around this program. not going to work. I was going to I was thinking about making the whole thing super directional. Working on some blockouts. Nice. Okay, I want to make this whole thing kind of thicker. So I'm not sure how I want to detail this mustache yet. Now we can extrude it. Yep, 
Yeah, right? He's like, <laughs> super grin. That is quite still wrapping around quite a lot. I'm a little unsure as to how I'm going to detail out this mustache. What I really like to do, my favorite, is to have uh, separate segments. Like, I would prefer having a whole bunch of like actual pieces in there forming the mustache. What my least favorite is just to have a block and then cut the lines in. Um, that might be all I have time for today, but like I said, I typically really like to go and just actually make different pieces uh, because that you know that's kind of how mustaches are made they're not just one big chunk they're little pieces and you can also kind of uh, have the tips of the hairs kind of come out of the face like originate from somewhere and that usually tends to look the best done a big oh big dynamesh splotches and there's nothing wrong with that that's it's really fun to to explore that way but uh yeah i'm i'm hooked on well that's the way i teach it now so i'm absolutely hooked on blocking stuff out with primitives okay so let's uh let's see if we can cut what happens with an insert edge loop there we go because i'm going to make this mustache looks look like it originates from underneath his nose and it's not just a big slab just kind of sitting there so i want to make it kind of round at the top and then squared off on the bottom because that's where it ends you know and be quite quite bushy. Let's get rid of these uh, creases. I do want creases on the bottom to go up to where it pinches up here. So we'll just continue to shape that. <laughs> yep, that's the way to do it. Just try to push yourself. Okay. Make this come to a pretty sharp point. pushing points this is that's how I modeled most of my characters my entire career so excuse me I'm used to I'm used to pushing points around that's why I always love Danny Williams nickname point pusher pretty funny Pushing points, pushing points. Okay, let's let's crease this. <laughs> Teach you. We're gonna start with the the dad jokes. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing and crease this. Actually, let's do crease poly groups. But then I want to add a crease along the bottom manually with the Z modeler brush. Crease poly edge loop partial. See how that looks. It's like a total wedge. Hey Young, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. 
Just making this uh, mustache, mustachio guy. Kind of curves up under too much. Not doing too bad for a Tuesday. Then just for the for the hair, I'm just gonna blob it in really quick. Hairblob.com. Okay. This is just a super simple way of blocking out hair. Oh, multiple subdivisions. Dang you. Let's start it from the mustache then. So I just needed an, a mesh to draw an insert mesh on top of that didn't have subdivision levels. So I picked the mustache and drew it on there. Then I'm gonna kind of put the hair in place and I want it on a different subtool. So I'm going to split to unmask points. Select the hair again. Oh, <laughs> 435, you're crazy. Thank you very, very much. You can, uh, thanks for joining me live. I appreciate it. Just gonna drag this bit. See, super qu quick way to block out the hair. Oh man, five. You guys, you're killing me. That's dedication right there. That's what that is. All right, I'm, this mustache is way too sharp drive me crazy, it's a little sharp. So I'm gonna apply this dynamic subdivision and then subdivide it again and then smooth, smooth it down. This is super sharp. Okay, one in the afternoon, nice. All over the world. Where, where in the world is it one in the afternoon? Right now it's 9.39 p.m. Here. Here in Utah, in the U.S. Just want to shape this a little bit more. Australia, of course. South Australia. Well, welcome to the stream. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to duplicate this off. Delete the subdivision levels. And I want to draw in the shirt just for a placeholder. I'm probably not going to get to the shirt today, but I wanted to have something there to indicate his body. In La La Land. I need to go off to La La Land, that's for sure.
Just little movements. And then it's fun to, uh, I like to clip the bottom off like this. Or even on an angle like this. Kind of fun. Let's smooth it out. Hit dynamic subdivisions. There we go. Let's see what time it is. Um, 9:42. Let's um, let's put in some color on him. Finally, huh? Color him up. Uh, it's a little orange. I'm trying to color him like uh, like I envision Luigi coloring him. I should probably turn to skin shade four. A little darker. Let's see. Um, let's see. Right, that's pretty fun. You're getting there. I'd say, uh, yeah, I just um, fo just focus on his um, the the definition of his shapes are pretty harsh. Focus on like going from sharp to uh, to smooth in between areas something like that but yeah it's really cool and his, his eyes maybe focus on his eye shape a bit but he's pretty cool okay is this let me see I always like going a medium tone on the on the on the skin tone and then hitting it with a little darker and then a little lighter so if I change this to a little lighter come in here and just kind of like Make him bald, shiny bald. And then add some red, a little more saturated to his nose. His cheeks, his ears especially his ears. And that little lip sticking out. And let's give him a, let's see, maybe a brownish hair. maybe yeah brown's pretty good oh so what happened there I just hit fill object I was selected his, I selected his eyebrows and since this airbrush is only at RGB intensity 2 it only filled this like 2% of a color and since it started as white it only filled it just barely as white Okay, so now I change him some dark Scorsese. There you go. <laughs> Scorsese, Scorsese dark eyebrows, white hair. <laughs> That's, I might let's try let's try something like that. Let's give him kind of black, like Mario. He looks like Mario. Kind of a. Let's do the base kind of this d super dark brown then we'll come back in and make it white I kinda like this darker shirt too let's make it like a make it dark blue indigo and let's give him eyeballs that are I don't like to go completely white 
just like a yellowish white like this then let's see then I go all the way black with the pupils let's give it enough resolution like three million <laughs> There we go. Look at that. Changes his personality just depending on where you put his eyeballs. <laughs> well, wall eyed. <laughs> you can give him little tiny pupils. Woo! <laughs> Um, non stopping I would suggest uh, Sculptress. Sculptress is free. It'll let you just kind of mess around. Um, and then if you like it, if you are actually having a good time, uh, I suggest moving up to ZBrush Core, which is $100, I believe, and it's $200 with a tablet. And then if you still like that, you can graduate up to the full version of ZBrush. Okay. So his pupils are kind of oval, like taller than they are wide, and I like that. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and do that. It's going really slow for some reason. kind of looking like a cat. Let's do that. Uh, with Core, no. Core is a um, kind of a, a beginner version of ZBrush. It's, I don't want to say stripped down, but it doesn't, there's some features that aren't included, like Z Remesher is not included. But Dynamesh is included, you can paint with color, you can do most of this stuff, but not all of it. There's a lot, there's a lot that's there. And I actually have a video that you can watch of me playing with ZBrush Core. It's on, uh, it's out on YouTube. Just look up Shane Olson ZBrush Core and you'll find it. It shows a whole bunch of different animals that I did. And you can kind of get an idea of what's possible with Core. I'm just going to lower his eyelids a bit. And there's also a trial of the full version of ZBrush. I, um, I think the link to it is down in the text below here. So you can try this stuff with that. And I have a course that I teach. I teach how to um, use ZBrush. It's called 3D Character Workshop. I just closed it for enrollment yesterday. So I'll be opening it up for enrollment again, a special, special time for three days during the ZBrush Summit. So if you didn't get in and you missed it, um, I'll be opening it for three special days during the summit. And then I'm going to close it again for uh, quite a while. So we'll s I'm, I'm not sure when I'll open it again. Okay. Now what I like to do is um, I like to add some fake ambient occlusion. So what I'll do is I'll get that medium color again. Then I'll come in here and go a little darker. Thanks, Aduano. <laughs> Bunch of my students are in here. And I just like to just kind of put some eye shadow in there and underneath his nose under his now with his chin his chin's different so we put some more around his, his eyes here and in his ears 
want to go a little darker. So with his chin, yeah, right, those two hairs. I should put those in there, huh? So gradients are fun. So with his chin, what I typically do is I will go blue with that to kind of represent like bluish purple, kind of an indigo, to kind of represent like a stubble, like five o'clock shadow, an animated che cheech. Amen. <laughs> See how it kind of introduces some blues in there? Just to add some more color. And if you take it too far, you don't have to worry because you can just select the base color, skin tone, and then come back over the top of it and push it back towards the skin tone. Take it away from the blue. So, And like I, I think I took his uh, eyeshadow a little too far, so I'm going to come back in here and lighten it back up a bit. Then I like to grab the, let's grab this dark brown. I'll turn him sideways so I can get a good, so my natural uh, arm stroke is in an arc like this from my elbow. and I, So I want to get that arc lined up with my hand. And you can do that with ZBrush. Turn him and then paint in just a little eyelid right here. And I typically only put it on the top. I don't necessarily put it on both sides. Sometimes I will. It's too much. Then you got to be careful with. You can do. You can smooth it. Like uh, color respect smoothing. If you're careful, you can come in here and just smooth it out. Now he has an eyelid. It's a me. Very good. Oh, cool, Chris. I'd love to see something from you. I'm going to come back in here with a fill brush and introduce those, those, the brow meat back in. you got to be careful because it'll start to push right through. The brow, and then I'll have to pull it back out. kind of looks like me. <laughs> this looks like me underneath my hat. <laughs> Alright. So even though I'm not a fan of it, I'm going to... I'm going to put some cut lines in his mustache. Non-symmetrically. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of doing that. I'd rather do chunks, but I'm kind of out of time. So I'm just going to do cut some lines in there. And what I'm doing is I'm using the detail brush, cutting in one line, and then coming in right next to it and pulling it out, making it sharp. Just a subtle one here. Ooh. Venture, Venture Brothers. <laughs> What's going on, Slytherin? Welcome to the stream. I'm almost done here. Does this look like a guy from the Venture Brothers? I don't really watch that too much. Just kind of a subtle, subtle little thing. Then I could come in here with like the snake hook brush and this is tricky. Cause it's it it adds the warbles bad. 
one trip, one way ticket to Warble Town right here. I was just trying to kind of break up this surface here as the cuts go down. I don't know if I like it or not. <laughs> Oh, you're replying to Chris? Let's see. Oh, you have a block in of Hank Venture. Oh, sweet. Sorry, I didn't even read. That's awesome, Chris. I gotta check it out. Now you've piqued my curiosity. For the third, is that an Adult Swim cartoon? Venture Brothers? Like I've seen, I've seen the, I've seen the sh like the advertisement for it, but I've not watched it. Cool. I'll check it out. All right. What do you guys think? Let me let me put a let's see if I have zebra eye material on here. You'll see you'll see what I'm talking about. Zebra eye reflect. There we go. Okay. I know it looks strange right now, but I'm gonna fill his eyeballs with this material. So I'm gonna change this to material, fill it, and then switch back to skin shade four. Look at that. Yeah, he's he's pretty Mario, yeah. He's like Mario without his hat. Have you seen my hat? <laughs> can make him can uh make him look sideways. Auto groups, let's see if it'll do it. Yep, sweet. Okay. Um, turn off symmetry. I'm just gonna make him look to the to his left. So this one's already kind of looking left. But maybe more? Let's see. More. Center, reset. Let's see. <laughs> Animated Cheech all day. <laughs> oh, you guys. Alright, here's a trick, you guys. When you have a character looking one direction or the other to the extreme, You'll always want to come in here to the actual head itself and pull it up right here to make way for that pupil. See that? It'll just look a little better if you open that up. And then uh, yeah, we can turn them a little bit too, but anyway, fun. Not not too bad for two hours, hey. <laughs> a stylized Rick. I've thought about it. Every everybody's modeling a uh, pickle Rick right now, <laughs> so I didn't want to hop on that bandwagon. But I want to make his n nose more red this really quick red or just kind of adds warmth to to his skin tone here yeah hey squid <laughs> thanks pickle rick that's kind of taken over for tiny rick tiny rick i'm tiny rick
bring his mustache down just a little bit. It's not quite that thick. There we go. Then widen this guy out just a bit. <laughs> it's fun. Too fun. Um, when you're doing animation, you kind of position them together when you're animating, but when you're posing in ZBrush, it's much better to do them one at a time. It's, I don't know if you even can do it together because of, I, like, the symmetry will go, like, make it go like this, you know, <laughs> instead of like this. So you kind of have to do one at a time. All right, we'll give uh, we'll give the stream a, a good looking shot to take it. I still need to put the collar and the the, the tie on, but anyway, we are out of time for tonight. Um, yeah, I've been I I've, I've been doing two hour streams because it's uh, three hours standing is kind of fatiguing a little bit. I might get back to it later, but right now I'm just doing um, I'm just doing some two hour streams, so I don't I don't kill myself so. <laughs> Anyway, thanks everybody for joining me so much. Hope you learned something a little bit here and there. Uh, this guy's super fun. And you should check out Luigi's work. Um, Luigi's an amazing concept artist. Put his lower, I keep seeing stuff. I'm going to put his lower lip out more. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks everybody for joining me tonight. And we will catch you next Tuesday night, same time, same channel. That'll be after the ZBrush Summit, right? So if you're going to the ZBrush Summit, I hope to see you there. I'll be giving a workshop. Um, and uh, just come up and say hello. I'd love to talk to you guys. So anyway, thanks again. Take care and have a great evening, you guys. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. Good night.